back, everyone. Happy to bring back Jim Frakes, CEO and CFO of Athlon Medical Inc. Trades on the NASDAQ AEMD. It's a medical therapeutic company focused on developing products to treat cancer and life-threatening infectious diseases. Welcome back, Jim. Now, since we last talked, you released news on the potential utility of your chemo purifiers used to treat long COVID. So we definitely want to hear your update and focus in on this exciting finding. Thanks, Anna, and happy to be back updating everybody on Athlon Medical. We have been working kind of behind the scenes with a, a, a very prestigious group at the University of California at San Francisco Hospital. That, that there's, they really are experts on long COVID. Uh, they have a, a number of patient samples. They send us plasma of long COVID patients and then controls to see if our device could bind uh, extracellular vesicles that may play a role in long COVID, as well as the spike protein, uh, which remains in the long COVID patients. Uh, we're a small company, as anybody that follows us knows. So I, when I became CEO, I focused our efforts on cancer, and that remains our primary emphasis. But once we teed up everything for the oncology trials in India and Australia, that freed up our lab uh, to work on these precious long COVID samples that we've had stored for a while. So they've, they've done a lot of research. Uh, our results were very interesting. Uh, we shared them with the UC San Francisco team. They uh, encouraged us to apply to a, a very high-end uh, conference called the Keystone Conference in August. And we were accepted uh, to present or to do a poster presentation at that conference. Uh, once the conference happens, we'll post the numbers the, the actual results. So it's it, it's preliminary. It was cost effective because we only paid for the transportation of the samples to our lab here in San Diego. But and I, people that don't have long COVID probably aren't aware of this, but the CDC's estimated that the prevalence of long COVID is between six and seven percent of the entire general population. It's a massive number. Like, for between 44 and 48 million people in the United States that suffer from this affliction. So brain fog, feeling tired all the time, there are a number of uh, symptoms. Uh, the US government spent a billion dollars and they haven't found a, a therapy, a cure, just kind of Band-Aids. Uh, so it's very early. I, I don't wanna overstate the importance of this to Athlon and our shareholders, but I'm hopeful that, that with our preliminary work, uh, there are possible government grant opportunities here. So we are gonna to continue to work on it, uh, albeit it's not our primary focus. But it's, it's exciting, it's a, it's a real market, it's a real problem for 44 to 48 million of, of our fellow Americans. It's awful. Um, Absolutely, and you also had a recent publication in May. Level you response on it to the long COVID question. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Jim. Uh, do you want to talk about your recent publication in May? It supported evaluating your hemopurifier, not only in oncology and infectious diseases, but also in organ transplantation and other areas of unmet medical needs. So can we talk a little bit more about that? Sure, sure. Happy to. Uh, so our device binds, and I should show it. I always forget to do that. It's an extracorporeal device that fits on blood pumping machines like dialysis machines or plasmapheresis machines that are in hospitals and clinics worldwide. Uh, so our product does bind these extracellular vesicles. We used to call them exosomes, but the term of art now is extracellular vesicles or EVs. Uh, we've originally focused on cancer because tumors emit tremendous numbers of EVs, but other diseases like MS, uh, also emit uh, EVs. And it's possible that uh, by capturing them, we could play a role there. So again, once we finished getting ready for the oncology trial, we turned our lab, because it was a, a very logical next step. They've honed their techniques of measuring changes in EVs in cancer. 
So we, we had them switch to measuring EVs in long COVID and also in these other disease states. So it's interesting, uh, we're applying for some patent protection in that space. Uh, it, it, it's a logical connection to our uh, working on oncology with the, with the EV uh, production approach. Perfect. And are there any updates you can share on your oncology trials in Australia and India? Sure. Um, let me talk about India first. Um, we've kind of been hung up for a number of months. They've, they've changed their regulations in India. Uh, it was originally changing import-export regulations, and now at least medical devices, if not all life sciences. So we've gone through a whole uh, exercise in hoop jumping with many meetings, and uh, we do expect uh, that we should be able to talk about actually starting that uh, fairly soon. But the signs are good. We're through a lot. Um, they changed a lot of the rules, but uh, it used to be pretty easy to get things going in India. That's not the case anymore. Uh, but uh, we, we think we're poised to start that soon. Uh, in terms of the work in Australia, uh, we have more tangible events there. Uh, I think the last time we spoke, I mentioned we have three hospitals uh, that, that are, had signed up to uh, run our clinical trial. One was in Adelaide. That's where the first patient was treated at the end of January. The, the, uh, the other, the number two hospital was in Gold Coast, north of Sydney, relatively small population wise, it's not, not, not a major city. And then the third hospital, the by far the largest hospital that we're working with is uh, affiliated with the University of Sydney. Now Sydney's a big city. Uh, I just looked up today what the greater Sydney area uh, represents in population. It's 5.2 million people uh, versus Adelaide, which is about 1.4 million people. So a much bigger population base. We're affiliated with, with a, the major university in town. And uh, it took them, they're bigger, the, they're uh, burdensome uh, logistics to go through with them, but they're through the process now. We're very pleased with their recruiting efforts and the patient recruiting efforts. and. Um, I'd like to say we hope to have some uh, news on that front uh, quite soon. Uh, I usually don't make such a strong statement, but we're very excited about um, mm -hmm. the work going on there. Um, so it's our primary focus. Uh, one, um, at, the, at the risk of uh, being redundant for people that have heard this before, it's a safety trial. It's designed for patients with solid tumors who have stable or progressive, meaning getting worse, disease during anti-PD-1 monotherapy treatment, such as Keytruda or Optivo, which are very popular, unfortunately for the patients, um, drugs. Um, so it's a safety trial. Uh, three patients in the first cohort, which is one treatment, Assuming all three patients are treated safely, there'll be a outside um, safety board making a decision to proceed to the second cohort, which will be two treatments in a week. And then again, uh, if the safety board deems that it's been a safe treatment, we'll go on to the third cohort of three times in a week. And it's basically a dose finding escalation measurement exercise to see how many times the best treatment would be for cancer patients to receive hemopurifier treatments. Uh, so uh, following the first patient treated in January, we need need two more um, to get to fill out the first cohort. So we're, we're shooting to have that happen soon. And um, that would lead to some important events, the decision by the independent safety board to proceed or not proceed. And then we'll have the uh, University of Sydney's lab we, we've retained to analyze reductions in EVs and uh, T cell markers, immune response to, to our therapy. And uh, I've been waiting 10 years to get to see that kind of information. So I'm excited to, uh, for when we get to that point. Um, so, so we have some major, major for our little company milestones coming soon, we hope. 
Wonderful. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Happy to hear this update and just continue to come back on, Jim, and give us these updates. We really appreciate it. Great. Well, thanks again for the, uh, the forum to speak. Wonderful. Okay, everyone, it's been a great first day of our two-day conference. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you back here tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern start time for day two of our super virtual investor conference. We'll see you tomorrow.